Hello, I'm Mary and thank you so much for coming. I pray that as you listen to this video today, your life will not remain the same again. Word, you also receive every blessing that comes with the word. You believe that? Shout a loud Amen. amen. So I'll be teaching on a series of teachings that I titled for Canada, Lamb Stands. Lamb Stands. And part one, we're going to be considering God's end time agenda. We're considering the teaching series for this conference, Lamb Stands. In Matthew chapter 5, we call it theologically the Beatitudes. So Jesus is teaching the people and he's introducing them to various concepts of the kingdom. When we get to verse 14, he says, you are the salt of the earth. And then he says, if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savour, it says, wherewith shall it be salted again? It is good for nothing except to be thrown down and trampled under foot of men. Then verse 15, he says, ye are the light of the world. 5, just 14 to 16. Ye are the light of the world. It says, you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp, it says, and to put it under a bushel. The Bible says, but they put it upon a lampstand so that it gives light or illumination to all who are in the room. Then verse 16 leaves us with a charge. It says, let your light. The word let means permit, allow. Do not restrict, do not restrain. Let your light so shine. Someone say, so shine. You're speaking about your destiny. Say it again, so shine let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds the bible declares and glorify your father which is in heaven hallelujah there are a number of things i want us to know and to discuss tonight number one is that god has a prophetic program for every individual god has a prophetic program for every nation that includes canada and God has a prophetic program for every generation or dispensation. I'll take that again. God has a prophetic program for every destiny that includes your destiny and my destiny and that of any and everyone following. God has a prophetic program for nations. He has a prophetic program for individuals for nations or territories and then he has prophetic programs for a generation or a dispensation this is very important and then in addition to that thought god has what we have come to know as his end time agenda would you shout that after me say god's end time agenda i'm trying to be as simple as possible because i need you to follow my teaching god has a prophetic program for individuals for nations and it varies per dispensation but god has a prophetic end time program a prophetic end time program that affects every individual every nation every territory and our generation and um there are three components please listen very carefully there are three components to God's prophetic program. In fact, I should say it this way, that God's end time agenda affects three groups of people. Number one, the world of unbelievers. We call them sinners, but I choose to call them unbelievers. The unsaved. So his first prophetic program is to the world of the unsaved. Number two, his second the second component of his prophetic program is to the church believers the saints are you following now and then the third component of his prophetic program is to societies and territories not just individuals let me take that again that god's end time agenda affects three groups essentially number one the world of the unsaved number two the saints the church there is a program that is only unique to the church unique to believers that means if you are not a believer in christ you cannot be part of that prophetic agenda and then there is an agenda that is to society that includes people saved or unsaved are we together if you're following me say amen, amen. a louder amen 
Amen like your miracle just arrived. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are we still here? And I should tell you that his prophetic agenda consists of number one, world evangelization. Please write that down. World evangelization. That is the dimension of his agenda that is dedicated to the unbelieving world. It's called world evangelization. This is the first component of God's prophetic end time agenda. World evangelization. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Mark 16, 15. Jesus left the disciples and that mandate extends now to all believers. He said unto them, the Bible declares, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, we read verse 3 and verse 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2, we're reading verse 3 and verse 4. The Bible says, For in the sight of God our Savior verse 4 let's read together ready read who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth one more time who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth so it is God's desire in order of priority to have all men that includes your family members, all men. That includes your relatives, all men. That includes your prodigal son, your prodigal daughter, your prodigal husband, prodigal spouse, any and everyone at all. He says, for this promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, even as many as are far off whom the Lord himself will call. The promise of salvation is for all men world evangelization is the first component know this as a pastor know this as a believer know this as a christian leader you are not doing much for the kingdom if you ignore this this is at the very center of god's heart and his desire you want to please the lord i'm showing you that god's end time program that represents his emphasis for the nation in the now especially within this season Number one, world evangelization. His desire to see all men saved. Number two, the maturity and the growth of the saints. This is the second component. This is the program that affects the church. The maturity and the growth of the saints. The maturity and the growth of the saints. Did you know that God did not intend for believers to just be saved? And to remain babes, to remain um, ineffective, to remain um, not transformed. There are many believers who are saved, like you heard me teach in America. But most of them are not, they are not growing. They are not attaining stature in the spirit. And so they are not able to do much for the kingdom. Here's what the Bible says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, and now brethren, I commend you to God. He's speaking to brethren, believers already saved they've encountered jesus the son of the living god he says i commend you to god and then he says to the word of his grace which is able to number one build you up brethren need to be built up the brethren the saints in christ need to be built up and then number two to deliver to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the bible says and that from a child Thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Paul lamented when he found out that the church had still remained babes, even though he thought they had grown, they were still... ...fed with milk because they were still unskillful in handling... matters god has a program uh, 
ordinary assignments of any local assembly. is someone learning so the first program of God for the nations this affects the world of sinners unbelievers is world evangelization by the way let me not take for granted that you know how an individual is saved you would be surprised how many believers in church cannot tell you how an unbeliever becomes a believer you don't become a believer by impartation no sir no sir my bible says john chapter 3 and verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his one then and only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 says for god did not send his son to the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved are we still believers Peter was speaking on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what do we do? First sermon after the resurrection of Jesus by anyone he trained. And he said, repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive of this promise. For this promise is unto you, your children, and as many as are far off. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 and 10, it says, If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. There is a way to be saved. If you believe Jesus as a prophet, you are not saved, even though it is the truth. If you believe Jesus as a good man, you are not saved, even though it is true. If you believe Jesus as Mary's son, that is truth but that does not save there is an exact information about jesus that translates to salvation let it be known to you peter rounded up his sermon O israel that this same jesus whom thou hast crucified has today been exalted as lord and christ there is an exact information about jesus that translates to the salvation of the believer if you're learning say amen so if you got saved by impartation, prepare to come for a proper altar call when I make the altar call because I guarantee you by the integrity of God's word, you are not saved. You don't claim salvation just seated there. There are things you do. Your heart participates in that process and then you verbalize, you vocalize the fact that you believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that when a believer so makes that confession, three things are given to you as a gift immediately. Number one, please write for your knowledge, you receive the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sin is the first blessing a believer or an individual receives when you come to Jesus confessing his lordship number two you receive what the bible calls the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness that gives you the authorization to receive the holy spirit no man can receive the holy spirit until you have righteousness equal to that of jesus and the bible tells us that by the righteousness that is of works of the flesh no man is able to meet that standard and so we receive as a gift not the type not the kind the very righteousness of jesus and that qualifies us to receive the third and the greatest gift that comes with salvation is called the way the life of god so this is the progression you do not receive the life until you have first received forgiveness of sin the gift of righteousness then you receive life someone say life let the devil hear you say life john chapter 10 and verse 10 jesus was speaking and then he said the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says i am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly amplified says to its fullest 
its fullest to have that life to its fullest there are many people in church unfortunately who are not saved they cannot recall making this confession they are not even aware for those who are saved genuinely so they've not been so mentored to understand what they actually received at the point of salvation and you see it is important for believers to be methodically mentored along the lines of spiritual knowledge else you will live a defeated life even though you are a believer because like you'll be learning shortly the life we have received in christ is knowledge dependent activating and releasing the riches that are hidden in that life it depends on knowledge ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened the bible says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart in fact the assignment of the god of this world is to blind the minds of people so that in as much as that which is finished in christ is a reality but because we do not have the knowledge of it nor how to engage we still remain defeated lives but no more not after this conference in the name of jesus christ not after this conference someone is rising it's as if you are molting out from your old self your old weak ignorant self into a believer with power and grace say amen, amen. now shout amen. amen salvation you will think what i'm saying is so basic and elementary but this is what gives you authority over demons this is what defines your possibilities in the world of men that i am a possessor of the life of god and that means the whole world i am a life-giving spirit something has happened to me there's been a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son i don't have my biological life alone another kind of life has been supplanted this is not some pentecostal gibberish this is fact based on scripture and at the point of believing this there may not be any physical evidence but you see in the kingdom we believe to see we don't see to believe we believe to see it is your believing that brings about manifestation it says who had believed our report it is to that one the arm of the lord has been revealed Are we learning so the first agenda end time agenda of god is world evangelization that every single soul in canada who is yet to encounter jesus that becomes the business of every believer not just preachers not just apostles and prophets it is the business of every believer and then number two zooming to the project that he has with the church the growth and the maturity of believers it matters that believers grow luke 2 52 and jesus increased even though the word incarnate he increased in wisdom he increased in stature he increased in favor with god and with men are we together galatians chapter 4 says an heir for as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all you are called to royalty to dominion to grace power but in ignorance you are not able to walk in the reality of that life the reality of the blessings that come with this zoe life someone is growing by this word in the name of jesus christ and so the second program is about mentoring believers to a point of transformation mentoring believers to a point of maturity mentoring believers to a point of stature and that happens through a sound communication of doctrine and the principles of the kingdom listen please there is a course curriculum for the maturity of the saints and with all due respect if you're a minister of the gospel please listen to me we are not given the liberty to just teach anything we want there is an exact course curriculum like that which translates a student to a doctor a student to an engineer a student to an architect when you use the curriculum of a doctor you do not call that person an engineer 
so there is a course curriculum that believers must submit themselves to this is the apostolic model that was given to us in the book of acts acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers are we together the challenge with most believers and with all due respect let me challenge us servants of the lord jesus christ is that there is a lot of freelancing of what we teach so we just guess what we think for a sunday service there has to be intention to the building the making of believers there's no chef who goes to the kitchen wondering what to cook you already have a picture of the end alongside the ingredients to combine I should be able to see a believer and tell you based on the authority of scripture give me one year with this believer this is what you will become do you believe that the bible says as many as believe him even those who believed on his name he gave them power to become there is such a thing as the power to become the power to become and like we read earlier on in first timothy chapter 2 verse 4 that god desires number one that all men be saved and then to come on to the knowledge of the truth not just to be saved once you are saved the next project is to come on to the knowledge of the truth please allow me to give an illustration that i gave to our american family i gave them a little progression on how transitions happen in the spirit until believers become people of stature let me steal out a minute or two to make that illustration that the journey of every man by default starts as an unsaved person are we together no one is born saved unfortunately nobody is born saved by natural birth the prophet said in iniquity did my mother conceive me the very nature of sin is enshrined in all men and flows through the bloodline so you start your journey all men as unbelievers unsaved unregenerate by encountering jesus as savior as lord that transition happens the bible says from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son are we still together now you are called a believer but the bible calls you a babe you are a believer haven't received eternal life but you do not have the knowledge requirement to empower your faith to walk in the reality of this life you have received so in as much as you are a believer your christian experience is still unprofitable your results will still be the same largely as someone who is not saved and then three forces are introduced to this believer to begin your process of growth number one the ministry of the holy spirit number two the ministry of the word number three the ministry of a teaching priest these tripartite forces these tripartite ministries begin your journey to growth and maturity let me repeat again that when you become saved the next project is to encounter the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the word and the ministry of a teaching priest are we together and so that begins your journey transformation line upon line precept upon precept until you become a transformed believer a transformed believer is number one one who by reason of knowledge has grown to a point of stature walking in the experience of dominion number two a transformed believer is one who the bible calls a spiritual man a spiritual man let me digress for a moment and teach you that the bible tells us that there are three kinds of men from a spiritual standpoint number one a natural man one who is unsaved is called a natural man number two the carnal believer you are a believer but you are carnal the word carnal is not an insult it just means sensual bound by your sensory impulses you do not live by the word and then the third and final man and this is the kind of man god is looking for is called the spiritual man there are many things that make a man spiritual i won't go ahead of myself you'll be learning but just for your knowledge that in this place across this place and all the overflows 
there are natural men in this conference right now there are carnal believers unfruitful in knowledge and there are matured believers but it doesn't matter what category you are found tonight i want to announce to you in the name of jesus that there is a package for you for the unsaved you finally found your way out to the immature in the spirit you found a template that you will follow to a life of victory and to one who is matured you would be further chiseled to understand and defend your maturity as a witness you believe that shout amen, amen. hallelujah are you following me so far so we're discussing the growth and the maturity of the saints as the second component of god's agenda believers must understand the principles of the kingdom line upon line they must contend for transformation and i did say that when you attain that state of transformation the next assignment is your empowerment empowerment becomes fruitful only to a believer who is transformed let me say that again empowerment becomes fruitful only to a believer who is transformed if you jump the step and you go from being saved to the search for anointing and empowerment your christian experience will still be unfruitful the holy ghost did not come on ignorant people even though he enhanced their knowledge but jesus walked with them for three and a half years guiding them providing mentorship opening them up to the mysteries of the kingdom and then they were empowered and you watch one sermon by following this model empowerment after transformation Peter preached one sermon and 3,000 people came to Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we learning? Number three, territorial transformation. This is the third and final component of God's end time agenda. So we have world evangelization, a program designed for the unbelieving world to bring them to the faith. Number two, the maturity and the growth of the saints this is true doctrine and discipleship and then number three we have what we call territorial or societal transformation that means the gospel and the transformation of believers should impact on the moral fabric of every society the moral fabric the gospel must improve the quality of lives of people within the territory first spiritually but it must translate to economic growth must translate to political growth sociological growth i will never be an advocate of the gospel or faith practice that has no impact on society the reason why it looks like our world is rejecting the christian faith and the gospel is because there is a misrepresentation so it has become an object of fanatism privy to a few with no direct impact on society but you read the bible Nineveh like I taught in America Nineveh was affected by the gospel Babylon was affected by the gospel in fact the bible says these are they that turn the world upside down that means after this conference there should be a definite shift in Canada first the spiritual climate listen but it should not just stop as a spiritual reality. Crime rates should reduce. Responsible men and women should arise to a point where the government will have to ask using data-driven facts that after such a conference as this, people did not just shout amen and fall under the anointing. We are not just going to celebrate healings and deliverances. We will also receive empowerments that help us to penetrate systems and, and the fabric of the culture. Are we together now? Yes. So when you study the ministry of Jesus, it didn't just end with signs and wonders. Jesus spoke to people in, in power. For instance, did you know that the entire discussion of John 3 was between jesus and one man called nicodemus how about matthew the tax collector how about zacchaeus jesus made an imprint upon society and the complete gospel should translate to improving the society 
I've been a student of revival for a while by the grace of God, and I do not know any genuine revival that did not impact on the moral fabric of society. Any revival at all will impact on the moral fabric of society. Emmanuel, God is with us. He shall reign over Canada. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Crown him King of Kings. Crown him Lord of Lords. Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God. Emmanuel, God is with us. He shall reign, He shall reign, He shall reign forevermore. I believe that in my lifetime before Jesus comes, we will see nations saved not just people groups nations like we will get to a point where from the president or prime minister to the members of parliament corporately they will come out and say as for me and my nation we will serve the lord as for me and canada we will serve the lord as for me and north america we will serve the lord you believe this shout amen are you learning so far so God has an end time agenda for the nations and that that agenda is threefold world evangelization targeted at the world of unbelievers number two the maturity and the growth of believers the saints this is a program for his church his bride number three territorial or societal transformation transforming the moral fabric the economic state the political state the sociological state of a territory and listen until this three happens in any territory there is still a desire in the heart of god are we together and if you found yourself here tonight it is because you have a mandate towards one or two or all of these programs that means there is a role that you have to play in making this kingdom come agenda happen and you will not miss your place in jesus name now very quickly i'm already sensing that there is it's like there is a steering that is happening so i'll just make mention of this point and then we'll just allow the lord i sense a very strong healing anointing i've just been trying to contain myself here but i know that god wants to touch somebody this is why you came god wants to touch someone like that pool in bethesda there is a steering only that it is not only the first that will be healed the second thing i want you to know very quickly is that god's strategy now you listen to this one god's strategy for accomplishing his threefold agenda is men or are men god's strategy for fulfilling this prophetic threefold agenda are we together now god's strategy has always been men not things men his strategy for world evangelization men his strategy for the maturity of the saints men his strategy for territorial transformation men someone say men, men. isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8 prophet isaiah had a profound encounter 
and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Canada. And who shall go for us? I have a program in Canada. I have a program across North America. But whom shall I send? My desire is unable to come to pass because the agenda is there. But the men, the vessels, the witnesses are not there. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then he said, like I'm praying someone will say tonight, Here am I, send me. Send me. Send me means equip me. Send me means prune me. Send me means do whatever it takes to make me fit and ready to be that witness. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Scripture number two. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. God's strategy has always been men. God's strategy has always been men. That means God's program is always at the mercy of men for its execution. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. And I sought for a man. God is seeking for men. You would think that God who owns the heavens and the earth, the creator of the ends of the earth, the Bible says, why should he look for men? I sought for a man among them. He's still seeking for men. Still seeking for men. May he find you tonight. In the name of Jesus, may he find you tonight. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says, We are his workmanship. I like that scripture. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had pre or foreordained that we should walk in. There is a path already earmarked for the saints, but it will take your partnership with the Holy Spirit to walk in the reality of that call. We are his workmanship. Then let's go to chapter 3 and verse 10. Same Ephesians. It says, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the ecclesia the manifold many-sided multifaceted wisdom of god that means there is a manifestation of god's wisdom that he wants to be seen to be revealed in canada and i'm telling you that god's strategy is men god's strategy has always been will always be men someone shall send me again shall send me hallelujah god's strategy has always been men i like first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 in fact that was about my last sermon before leaving nigeria first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 the bible says for we are laborers together with god isn't this such a profound honor to be called a co-laborer a co-laborer a co-laborer a co-laborer do you know what that means god decided to limit himself to wait for your own contribution for his program to work he can do without joshua selman but he's given me a space in his program do you know what that means let no man despise you you have a space in god's program oh did you hear what i said let no man despise you you may not look like it yet the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be like but that does not mean we will not become it says why we look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen i mean not the, are the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For our light afflictions, which worketh in us a more, which is but for a moment in fact, worketh in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. God has a space for you in his program. You may feel weak, but I tell you by his predeterminate counsel, he has chosen that you must be part of his program. You believe that? Shout Amen. Amen. Hold on for one moment. We live in a world where people pride themselves in bullying others, demeaning others. Does that happen in Canada? social media is full of all kinds of insecure and sick and weak people who try to find healing by causing pain to others and sometimes 
when you find yourself in a culture that sells sells pain as a product you are tempted to doubt your calling and your election so when someone tells you you are not good enough not rich enough not beautiful enough not handsome enough not eloquent enough chances are excellent that you will buy into that deception but i'm telling someone that in the name of jesus he saw you he foreordained that you should be part of his program and in case you've lost that mandate may that fire be reignited tonight do you know what that means there is a portion in god's program that if you do not rise to fulfill it will be left undone except if god transfers your bishopric to another i don't know about you but i have a covenant with my destiny that my bishopric would not be transferred to another no he said let his bishopric let another take I'm yours forevermore, whoever you want to heal. Lord, you can heal through me, whoever you want to lift. Lord, you can lift through me, wherever you want to go. Lord, you can go through me. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whatever you want to change lord you can change listen for someone this is not a song it's a covenant commitment the lord you are looking for people so your strategy is men not just angels there are angels but he needs men he needs men he needs men if god does not find men his program for Canada, his program for your family. Are you not seeing your loved ones die? Are you not seeing your loved ones go down? Do you think Satan is that powerful? He's seeking for a man, one who will cover that gap, one who will stand and close that bridge, burn that bridge and say evil will never cross to the other side. I mean, oh, oh. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Wherever you want to go, Lord, you can go through me. Whatever you want to say Lord you can say can you turn this song into a prayer in one minute go ahead and pray Canada I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Hallelujah. Listen, it is a beautiful thing. Please be seated. When you find your place in destiny, you know, when Pastor Nat was just blowing the trumpet and leading us to worship, I stood there and among the many things I was thinking about, the value of obedience knowing that God's strategy depends on me it's not pride he's chosen to incorporate you believe it I have a role to play in God's program ah though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before 
And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is. This is the part I like. That though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. You know what this song means? That not everybody will embrace this noble call, but that our motivation is that there are others who have gone before us. They embrace this call. Frail, some of them. Weak, some of them. Uneducated, some of them. Unenlightened, some of them. But they came with their frailty and gave all. They broke that alabaster box. They brought everything and said, Lord, use me. And he made mighty giants out of them. You call them generals today. You call them shakers and makers of spiritual things. They were rain makers. They programmed spiritual climate over territories. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who has crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. That 10, 20 years from now, because of you, the nations will say, thank God you came. Thank God that after Sound of Revival, a true revivalist arose from that conference and began to move across the cities, across Canada, with the power of the Holy Spirit, shifting things, acting as a spiritual rainmaker, reprogramming the destinies of men, shaking off and warding off the powers of hell. I told God if it depends on me by your grace I will not fail if it depends on me by your grace I will not fail if it depends on me the songs that need to become ladders for the revival they are locked up in someone's spirit but if you do not know that God's strategy is man you will admire others at the detriment of your own call it is good to admire and celebrate people but know that you have a place is someone learning tonight neither do men light a lamp provided the lamp is lit hmm. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, we hail you most high. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, we hail you. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you. Hello, you
everlasting. Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the lion and the lamb. Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the lion and the lamb. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. Rising from the ashes, rising from the ashes, embracing the mandate of God upon your life. You're my glory, oh my glory, the lifter of my head. You're my glory, the lifter of my head. My head, the lifter up of my head. You are the lifter up of my head. 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 Prophesy. The lifter up of my head. The lifter up of my head. The lifter up of my head. I have to take a pause here. I see a lot of angelic activities happening here. Now. It's like the Spirit of God is reaching to people and saying, I've been looking for you. Finally, man of God, you may be ordinary, but I'm looking for you. Let my hand rest upon you. Let my grace rest upon you. Ela kapara keta baraka tose teasa. Alega baraka te praska te baka tosko to prea. Ebra keta baraka paroska bereta. Lega praka te baraka te praka te baraka ta. Raka ta branda ka baraka skote. Ebrin te ska baraka tosko te baraka ta. Shabranda keta baraka ta. Ebra tosko to prete ka baraka ta. Era pasada baraka tabata, e pratos kote belekata. God's strategy has always been man. His strategy to reach the nation, man. His strategy for the maturity of the body, man. His strategy for territorial transformation, man. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are the lifter up of my head. The lifter up of my head. You are the lifter up of my head. The lifter up of my head. You are the lifter. You are the lifter of my head. Hear me. The Spirit of God is calling men. There is a solemn assembly in the Spirit. Rise to the place of your mantle. Rise to the place of your call. Rise to the place of your mantle. It's a call, Canada. God's program is at risk in your land. God's program is at risk. There are men and women who must embrace the call.
The call is not preaching. The call is to be a witness. The call is to be a lampstand. The call is to be a co-laborer, a partner with God in this kingdom come agenda. You're my glory. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. The healing anointing. I sense this very strongly. And usually I would not do this. But ushers, I'm going to ask you to bring those under the anointing right now. Please, if you can, bring them forward. If ushers are limited prayer department, you can help them. There are people by the Spirit of God. Rain is falling in this place. Rain. Rain. There is a drawing by the Spirit. A drawing. Kali ta sabashaya. Laga braga daba laga para dos kodiata. A drawing by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Holy. Holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes. Ale Kalikot, la Serisi, who comes. Hallelujah. Now, hear me. I will ask Pastor now to blow the shofar. There is a sound that you will hear from your spirit man. It's a sound of your call. There is a mantle for your destiny. There is a, an apostolic mantle, a prophetic mantle, an evangelistic mantle. Deep is about to be called on to deep. And in the name of Jesus, before we pray for the sick, there is a shofar that is about to sound over Canada. And as you hear that sound, let the mighty army arise. Arise, O Gideon, from your place of hiding. Arise, O Deborah, from your place of hiding. There is a clarion call. The program of God is at risk. Seeking for men. Yes, sir. Oh, hear the sound of the spirit. Hear the sound of the spirit. Canada, hear the sound of the spirit. Apostles, hear the sound of the spirit. Prophets, hear the sound of the spirit. Evangelists, hear the sound of the spirit. Captains of industry, hear the sound of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. The Lord is opening my eyes. I'm about to minister to you. I'm seeing chains. Chains over hands. Chains over the feet of men. This is what I see in my vision. Hmm. But the Bible says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. It's time for chains to break right now. I'm going to count three and at the third count I want you to shout the name of Jesus and as you shout that name every demonic activity over your life your family we come by an apostolic call by a prophetic mantle to break every chain that has tied down destinies Canada are you ready 
at the count of three you shout the name jesus and every lawful captive by the blood of the eternal covenant must go free right now are you ready one two three shout jesus chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken every orchestration of witchcraft every orchestration of ancestry diabolic powers holding on to destinies holding on to families give way give way by the blood of the eternal covenant give way in the name of jesus Now, for all those who are here, there's a reason why I ask that you bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare every hindrance to your accessing power, every hindrance to your becoming that vessel ordained by God. I command that hindrance to give way now. I command that hindrance to give way now. I curse every devil. I curse every limitation from your life. And tonight at this conference, I release you. I release you to a new season. Step into a prophetic season by the power of the Holy Ghost. Step into a prophetic season by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Therefore, I declare fear dies, timidity dies, oppression gives way now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every devil, every demon, every spirit, by the blood of the eternal covenant, leave their destinies now. Leave their destinies now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our final session tomorrow night will be a miracle service. But let me just go ahead of myself. While I was praying for Canada, I saw a dark cloud like a blanket over the entire nation. And I was told that it limits people. And the Spirit of God took me to Luke 12 and the woman who had been bound you don't have to be bound physically it stops people from standing straight there is a spirit over this territory that strips honorable men of their dignity they remain they have to serve bow down he said ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound these years in the name of jesus we came to roll away that cloud we came to roll away that cloud 
Canada, hear the word of the Lord. We came to roll away that cloud in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Those who are out here can return to their seats rejoicing. I'm ready to pray for the sick now. Hallelujah. Something mighty is happening in this place. Hallelujah. Who is by the name Victory? I'm hearing a name Victory. Victory. I can imagine that Victory, not Victoria, Victory. Hallelujah. If you find such a person, if they're in the overflow, that's fine. But Victory, there is a lady called Victory. I'm hearing that name in my spirit and whoever that lady is god's word for you victory a gentleman no problem i'll pray for you but i'm hearing it's a lady you are called victory i'm seeing a lady in my vision victory who is that what's your name victory look at me darling chair up you just relax i will pray for you don't feel bad my friend i'll pray for you what he says to one he says to all victory look at me you believe in the power of the holy spirit i'm seeing something that looks like a chain around your life and the lord is asking me to break that chain this is not just for you but your entire family in the name of jesus i stretch my hands chains break now break now break now break now break now in the name of jesus hallelujah I'm hearing a name, it's a Yoruba name, I believe. Yoruba from Nigeria, Dolako. Is there something? Dolako. Dolako. Who is that? The Lord is saying, I should tell you, you are stepping into a new season. That a new season. Dolako. Who is Dolako? The Lord is saying, I should prophesy that you are stepping into a new season. A new season. Who is Dolako? This word, don't miss your word. Dolapo, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. Let the power of God rest upon you now. Take that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Gift, G I F T, gift. That is your name. Gift. Is there someone called Gift? Please don't tell lies. You are Christians. If it's not your name, sit by gift. Who is gift? Is there someone called gift? Gift. Hmm. Gift. Where are you? Listen to me. There is somebody, it's as if you cannot walk well. I don't know who that person is. You cannot walk well. Gift. Your leg. Check. A miracle has happened now. This is what I'm seeing happening to gift. Help him. Help him. The anointing is upon him. Gift. I feel the pain around my legs. Gift. You're not able to, it's like there's something wrong with listen let me say this when you see a prophetic operation like this i need to give you a disclaimer up front not everybody is fake there are people who love jesus and are people of integrity are we together unfortunately i know that the prophetic has been abused um, i mean made all kinds of caricature but when the prophetic is administered within the boundary of scripture it becomes for edification for comfort gift look at me run check yourself check yourself 
Look at this. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. This man is running with all his hand. Any pain? Where was the pain? Check yourself. Oh, you are an athlete. Um, give us a mic, please. Give us a mic. We're about to begin to take testimonies now. So, Kayode, Dr. Molly, please give them mics. Hallelujah. My friend, yes, sir. let me know about your situation. Sir, I'm an athlete. You are an athlete? Yes. From where? From Nigeria. From Nigeria? Yes. No, I no, no, I mean, you're based in Canada? Uh, yeah, I came here last year. Oh, you came here? Okay. Yes. So, I'm an athlete from Nigeria. Straight to the point. Yes. Chioma Ajuma was my coach. Hold on, hold on. There's someone you don't hear very well with your left ear. Your left ear. Who is that? You? Place your hand there. I'm praying for you, but I'm praying. A lady is going to shout loud under the anointing. Very loud. People will shout. Bring that person here. What has happened to you now, my friend? Right now, I, I, I just ran now. He said the left side of his body was... The left side of your body? Actually paralyzed. He couldn't train anymore. He couldn't run anymore. But now, the power of God struck him. The anointing is upon this lady. This lady. Please help her. That lady holding her hands. The power of God, I'm seeing like oil being poured upon her head. So I want you to help her in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to be praying for the sick. Please listen to me. Jesus heals. It is true that he heals. Jesus, something special, supernatural about your name. Jesus, something happens when I mention. Amen. Hear me. Shortly, I'm going to be praying for you, whether you are in here, the main hall, or the overflow, and the power of God is going to touch you. I'm going to ask you after I pray to rush when you find out you're healed whether it's to my left or to my right there will be um ministers of the gospel who will just test you we have medical people too to test you and then we'll take a few testimonies right now um but for all of you who are here in the name of jesus somebody is going to testify here tomorrow listen and that testimony is going to be concerning an email you will think i'm joking until you hear the testimony a this is a testimony that should have come since last year but for whatever reason it's been hijacked by demonic powers i say this under god if it is god that has spoken you will stand here and testify receive it as a prophetic word in the name of jesus christ now i stretch my hands over everyone we need to clear the place all who are standing here in the name of jesus christ for whatever reason by the power of the holy spirit i stretch my hands and i declare in jesus name let the power of god touch you now touch you now someone by my left I'm seeing light the power of God is coming on you a strong anointing just on this robe with this gentleman wearing black a strong anointing and the Lord is saying he's shifting you to a new season shifting you to a new season shifting you to a new season I release that grace upon you help them in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Please return to your seats rejoicing. We're about to pray now. We're about to pray now. We're about to pray. Now hear me. For those of you who are watching online, this is the one sound of revival Canada. I'm about to pray for the sick. 
if there's someone who is sick please you can use your device put it on loud and take it close to them miracles are about to happen now jesus heals he does not just save he heals do you believe that so here's what i want you to do i know some of you are standing in for yourselves you're standing in for your loved ones whether you are in the main hall or any of your it doesn't matter you release your faith i'm about to pray i'm going to ask you to lay your hands where you are trusting god for a miracle that can be for you or for your loved ones you can stand in for someone now, and i mean this seriously you know someone who is sick you have my permission call them or send them an sms tell them connect now we want to pray we want to pray glorify your name glorify your name glorify your name in all the earth glorify your name my god glorify your name glorify your name majesty we worship your majesty you know that song help me all to be your glory hallelujah why does Jesus heal listen Canada do you know why Jesus heals he does not heal just to bring validation to the man of God you see every manifestation of sickness is a measure of death God designed the system of men such that every man is given one body per lifetime your spirit is hosted by a functional body not just a body the body has to be functional to host the spirit and there is a law that demands that there is a certain health requirement for your spirit to remain in that body are we together when the body deteriorates beyond that threshold the spirit will have to leave you call it death whether timely or untimely that's not the issue are we together so one of the ways that satan aborts god's program is to deteriorate this body such that it is not healthy enough to host your spirit and allow you the liberty to function you need to understand that dominion was only given to spirits with bodies 
a spirit that does not have the body cannot be part of the dominion mandate men are spirits but the unique thing about men is that that spirit is domiciled in a body are we together it is the reason why as powerful as the holy spirit is when he comes to the earth it is in partnership with a human body that god's purpose is happen demons in partnership with a human body are we together men are spirits but spirits that reside in a body so the bible says a body has thou prepared for me every time sickness happens around your body it is beyond just a health issue it is satan attempting to proceed further to damage that body in a way and a manner that it becomes too sick to host your spirit and then you will have to leave that way the kingdom has lost a functional body that can carry out god's purposes so when the healing anointing comes it is beyond just recovery and testimonies and an attestation that a man is anointed it is god's commitment to keeping you strong healthy so that you can carry out this kingdom come agenda i just explained do you understand that that means when the healing anointing comes you must open up your spirit it doesn't matter how simple the pain is don't tolerate it every time you tolerate satan he proceeds further acts chapter 12 the bible says herod decided to vex certain jews and james was caught and imprisoned and beheaded and the church kept quiet the most troubling part of that scripture is the bible says when herod saw that it pleased the jews he proceeded further when you keep quiet satan proceeds further it starts with a slight headache you call it your inaction gives him the motivation to proceed further until they find out that what was once a slight headache now becomes a tumor growing it doesn't matter how minute the situation is insist that you must be healed now the bible says the woman said to herself you can say to yourself if i may but touch the helm of his garment the man at gate beautiful when peter looked at them he was begging for arms and peter said silver and gold i do not have my god but there is something i have in the name of jesus christ of nazareth he said rise up and walk and the man was watching peter held onto his hands and lifted him we're about to pray do not tolerate sickness healing is real are we together now so here's what will happen i'm going to be ministering the power of god to your bodies the various areas some of you already under the influence of the spirit many miracles have already happened to you and when i pray as i'm praying for you i'm praying for your loved ones who are connected we're praying for all who are connected this is only day one imagine what god does by tomorrow morning and evening amazing things happening in canada already when i pray i'm going to ask you very quickly to check yourself whether before now or now or after i pray the moment you find out that a miracle has happened don't sit back i know that it's quite a distance and then other overflows but we're going to allow you to testify so you make your way down to my left make your way down to my right will confirm you take some testimonies and then i will wrap up that which i have to do tonight canada how many of you see that a visitation is already a mighty visitation i'm sure that the men and women of god in this nation by the time you mount your pulpits on sunday or any other day it will be fire on the altar in the name of jesus christ god sent us by mercy and grace to strengthen the hands of those who labor in word and doctrine for many years this is how the church should function are we together are you ready to be healed now lay your hands by faith believing jesus healed them all the bible says you lay your hands no other name like the name of jesus there's no other name like the name of the Lord. 
no other name like the name of Jesus is worthy of honor is worthy of glory is worthy of power and praise amen so I'm going to ask as I always do I'm glad to always have him with me it's such always a joy and an honor ministering healing alongside with Pastor Nat he's going to blow there's something about that sound of the spirit and after he blows that shofar I'm going to begin to make prophetic declarations yours is to receive by the power of the Holy Ghost for someone you are already sensing an anointing just like fire from your head to your toe it is the healing power of Jesus surging through your body bringing life bringing restoration that river is flowing flowing from the temple and leading to every wilderness <laughs> that until the spirit be poured upon us from on high the bible declares that the wilderness be counted for a fruitful field then a fruitful field be counted for a forest open up your heart and receive miracles are happening now yes sir El aparato sobrasia, el emado sobres, el ato caparos, quebrante que va la costa de, ya de vela que te para, de la bala tosiada, de na sobra de que de vela de para de para, sale para que para que para de para para, de la que para tu sobra que de vela de para. name of Jesus I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare from the front to the back left to my right any and all the overflows and the many who are connected online in the name that is above all names this moment I cost every spirit that is back of infirmities Canada shout a believers amen I curse every spirit responsible for infirmities and sicknesses leave God's people now in the name of Jesus now I declare be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name my God let that fire touch your body now let that healing power touch your body now i declare headaches be healed now eye conditions you could not see well i command blind eyes to open now whether partial blindness total blindness be opened now i command deafness of any kind and any sort be healed in the name of jesus if you came here using a crutch or using an aid and you could not walk lift it up and begin to walk now lift it up and begin to walk now in the name of Jesus Christ I declare pains pains around your body be healed now every growth around your body fibroids lumps I cost them right now help those under the anointing I cost them right now I cost them right now there's a gentleman you have severe pain 
just around your shoulder the power of God is touching you right now I see that you are a white man in the name of Jesus Christ the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you you check that you will not find that pain again what he says to one he says to all there is a lady you came here in fact don't be embarrassed but it is to you according to the manner of women whether it's your cycle or not you have excruciating oh a miracle has happened there give Jesus praise give Jesus praise I'll soon ask you to come but he can make his way and you can check him but I'm still praying a lady you came here whether it's your cycle or not you can have embarrassing flow just anywhere anytime it happened to you even whilst you came here I'm speaking to you now that flow comes to an end now after this prayer you can rush to the restroom and check yourself you will find out that demonic thing is gone forever there's someone you're already having symptoms of lumbar spondylosis severe pain around your lower back the power of God is touching you right now I'm seeing a lady you have felt multiple lumps around your right breast the right breast the power of God is touching you right now touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ there's a gentleman you have a urinary problem I'm not a doctor I don't know what is the professional name but you have a urinary problem frequent urination sometimes if you delay you can even begin to ease yourself before you get to the uh, uh, um, the restroom in the name of Jesus the Lord is delivering you from that embarrassment a knee problem you have a severe problem with your knee particularly your kneecap the power of God is touching you right now I command cancers to die did you hear what I said I command cancers to die um, the, the someone you have severe pain around your throat it looks like tonsillitis but it's been there for a while it's refused to go excruciating pain as you try to swallow as soon as I'm done praying check yourself the power of God is touching you right now the Lord is healing someone from asthma asthma the power of God is even coming upon one of such people I know there might be a number but asthma breathe in breathe out you'll see that there's a miracle there is a lady I'm seeing that you are at the back you could not see me very well you couldn't see this stage very well but right now the power of God is is resting upon you you will see us clearly a miracle is happening to your eyes right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me someone you're not able to do what I'm doing now you watch what I'm doing you are not able to do it I don't know what the problem is but there's excruciating pain the power of God is touching you right now touching you right now there's something called appendicitis you have severe pain just at the right side of your lower abdominal region but for you it is not appendicitis but it looks like that symptom as I pray for you right now, bend, check yourself. You find out that a miracle has happened to you. You have severe pain. Uh, this is a dental problem. You're having severe pain. I think your molar or so. The power of God is coming on you right now. In the name of Jesus, you will check it and find out the pain is gone. The pain is gone. The pain is gone. I'm seeing a thermometer go up and down and every time I see this the Lord is rebuking high blood pressure high blood pressure high blood pressure in the name of Jesus your blood pressure goes down now goes down this moment receive it it goes down now I don't care how long it's been hypertension high blood pressure goes down now hallelujah perhaps we'll leave that for tomorrow but let me just minister since the Lord has brought it before my face there is a woman here I know there might be a number but I'm still praying but the Lord is asking me to minister to that woman eight years no child 
eight years no child eight years no child eight years if there is such a person please come else I'll just finish the prayer eight years no child eight years your season has come who is that person eight years no child because most of this situation is demonic my sister place your hand on your chest I cost that spirit out of her now in the name of Jesus please help them I decree and declare husband and wife both of you sir the Lord is telling me I should tell you to place your hand on your chest you understand yes I'm praying for both of you but the prayer is for you first I hope you're not embarrassed sir. in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I prophesy to you according to the time of life in the name that is above all names the power of God is coming on one of you this is twins you believe what I'm saying believe what I'm saying twins this is what I'm saying mighty God father in the name of Jesus you have anointed us as life giving spirits extensions of your power your grace who is here your sister too does not have a child your sister look at me where is she United Kingdom where is she please let's have the mics working the media please just get the mics once we're here down let the mics work she's in the United Kingdom mm. okay I'm seeing it lady in UK where is she she's in United Kingdom Hall where in UK Hall Hall is there is there such a place as that mm. UK 10 years no child nine years US it doesn't matter what country Lagos are you married okay she's your sister how many of you believe that God is able to make a woman without a child carry children not a child how many of you believe that we agree as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ you wouldn't believe the song I'm hearing in my spirit I can see everything 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 do you see everything tell you something about spiritual things you see listen spiritual things always sound foolish until you see the results they deliver I'm here minding my business and I hear a song and you will be surprised that that song is someone's connection point why God does that honestly I cannot explain now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands on over you and extending to your loved ones anyone under the sound of my voice who has been without a child in the name of Jesus I prophesy over you by this time next year return with your miracle children hallelujah hallelujah in the name of Jesus Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man and Gabriel replies and says the power of the highest shall overshadow you and I'm praying for you as you have come out that is the same way you will come out again this time around holding your child for someone God is saying I should prophesy to you that the baby clothes you bought is not a waste I don't know who that person is 
you bought baby clothes by faith you kept it in your house the lord is saying i should tell you that the baby clothes you bought is not a real child will wear those clothes in the name of jesus please return to your seat rejoicing hallelujah in the name of jesus can i finish my prayer for the sick now someone um please don't be embarrassed i'm seeing like a boil just around your thigh area this been painful after that prayer after this prayer right now you will check yourself and you will not find that boil again in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ you couldn't bend over couldn't bend over but after this prayer i want you to bend bend and you will find out the supernatural power of the holy spirit has touched you in the name of jesus and for someone you are watching online wherever your home office perhaps you're somewhere in africa just waking up in the name of jesus as it is happening here right now in canada let the power of god touch you right where you are bring you life and bring you healing in jesus name now pastor Nat is going to give us one powerful song whilst we do that i want you to check yourself i want us to call satan a liar over canada we are going to be announcing to principalities and powers that jesus still heals jesus still lifts there is a shout of a king in our midst in the name of jesus so you check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle do what you could not do we already have a brother standing here just a moment um i want you just just give us a few minutes so that we have more people come out are you seeing people already coming out miracles are happening so you check yourself make your way out do what you couldn't do you couldn't walk try to walk take a step of faith don't be afraid you couldn't talk or you came with a child perhaps maybe autistic or whatever release your faith right now as we take this praise and worship please make your way quickly and we'll take a few testimonies and call the devil a liar over canada jesus is lord go ahead sir. i stand amazed in your presence make your way to the front let's celebrate them as they come coming please clear the way for them or just protocol if they are coming for testimonies please let them come and then help those who are coming from the overflows so that we allow them to come
make your way to the front. You're trusting God. what Jesus is doing here yes. my God mighty mighty manifestations of his hand but before we begin to take the testimonies you'll be seated shortly but I just felt stirred to speak whilst we we're just worshiping I was distracted by vision I saw a woman I don't know whose mother is that in a hospital with um, you know like something that is that oxygen or so I'm saying that this woman is about to die, but the Lord is asking me to speak. So let me just do that. I don't know who that person is. Perhaps you are even connecting right now. I just saw that in a vision. In the name of Jesus, we pray over that dear mother, you shall not die. Come on, Canada, let's agree. You will not die. And as I pray for that woman, I pray for every other person who is on the bed left for dead whether stage four doesn't matter the situation terminal disease in the name of jesus hear ye the word of the lord let death give way now we speak life to their bodies in jesus name canada are you ready to celebrate miracles give jesus a big hand clap and be seated for a few minutes go ahead apostle help apostle. us with the mic media please make sure the mics are working hallelujah so who is responsible for the mics? Please make sure that the mics are working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Apostle, we have this woman here. She's had arthritis for 15 years. Arthritis? Yes. She came in walking in pain. Um, she had to hold on to something to be able to do that. But as she came into the service, all the pain is gone. Gone. Ma'am, please can do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Any pain. Walk. Walk. Any pain. Turn around. Please turn around. Any pain. Do this. Can you see what I'm doing? Do this. Any pain. Let's give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise for her miracle. Never return to you in the name of Jesus. Yes, please. Next person. Both of them, you just spoke about pain in the molar. She's had six months of pain in her tooth, in the molar tooth, and she was six supposed months. to go for Let me hear her. Now. How long has this been? Six months. It's going on and on, but almost over a year. And they've been saying I need a root canal. So you, I you need a what? A root canal. Okay. So I did not go for the root canal. And when I came in, I had the pain. And, and right now? And now I have no pain. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. In the name of Jesus, for you and the gentleman, I decree and declare this pain gives way now. Never to return to you again. Are you fine now? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Apostle, phenomenal things are happening here tonight. Amen. You gave a word of knowledge about a man, and you specifically said a white man with pain in his shoulder. Two years ago, he hurt himself at work. Let me hear him speak. Go ahead, sir. Please. What yeah. happened to you? Two years ago, I hurt, I hurt my shoulder. It was a partial tear at work. So I, I haven't been able to work out. I'm yes. limited. And uh, yeah, it's completely gone. Right now. Yeah. Up, down, up, down. 
no pain. Let's celebrate Jesus. You also gave a word about pain in the molar. Six months ago, he started feeling the pain in his left molar, but now the pain, pain is gone completely. It's gone. It's gone yeah. In the name of Jesus, Canada celebrate miracles. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, please, very quickly. Also, this young woman here, several years ago, she began to feel inconveniences on her breasts. She couldn't even go to the hospital, but two years ago, she developed courage to go to the hospital, and they checked and saw multiple lumps in her breast. Multiple breasts. lumps. Multiple lumps in her How breast. long was this? Um, I went to the hospital first in January 2023, uh -huh. um, and then I did a one-year scan again this year, January. Yes. It's, the name of it is called fibroadenoma. Well, we have a consultant from John Hopkins here, so I mean, uh, let's, let's give it up for uh, Dr. Eke. God bless you. So, I mean, They've we checked have a it professor tonight. from John Hopkins, so yes, sir. When, when we're in doubt, we just refer to Prof to bail us out. Go ahead. They've checked it tonight. The lumps are completely disappeared. Gone. Completely. Got completely Come on, gone. Canada. Completely gone. There was, there was particularly one that... There was Hold on. Just a moment. There yes. was particularly one here that used to protrude There was out. one there. There was one here. So Check it now. It's gone. Check it now. It's gone. gone. My mom is here. It's I shouted. I was... You can't My find it again. It's gone. Yes, it's gone. Our mom is around somewhere. Your mom. My mom is here. Where is your mom? Mommy, mommy. The dearly, that's our mom coming. Let's let's celebrate mommy. Jesus is yes. You have done it again. Jesus is yes. He has fetched away what was impossible. You may Mommy, mommy, are you aware of the situation? Yes. You are aware? Yes. And right now, look at this. He said, mommy's gone, mommy's gone. Hallelujah. 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 You see, listen, miracles, miracles do not just end by celebrating the testimony you also discern what God is saying through the testimonies the God who can take a lump in a moment that same God can come to your family and take away reproach in a moment and I'm prophesying to someone in the name of Jesus yours may not be bodily healing but anything that causes you pain I decree and declare may my God take it out of your way take it out of your way Take it out of your way. I'm speaking to believers. May he take it out of your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mommy, let me speak a blessing to you and your daughter. How long have you been in Canada? Two years. Two years. Go and write it down. By September next year, do you have your property? You have your property. Go and write it down. I'm saying this to you prophetically. It doesn't matter how many properties you have now by september god will take 10 years and put in one year for you in the name of jesus christ god bless you ma'am bless apostle, you apostle 17 years ago this woman was tested with lumps 17, in, 17 years lumps in her breast she went to the hospital. They took it out by surgical operation. Okay. Last year, it resurfaced. And then it started growing again. Tonight, the power of God struck her and the lumps are completely disappeared. The lumps are gone. So you went to the hospital. I had surgery 17 years ago. Yes. And last year, I've been in Canada for 14 years. But last year, I was having lots of pain where my breast would get stiff and the, 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 the veins would just pop up. And it's excruciating pain. When I went to the doctor, I did ultrasounds, mammogram, and they said that it's, it's benign, it's not cancerous. But the breast was bleeding and the lump was, it was so, it was hurting very much. Yes. And um, tonight when you prayed, the lady with the, the lump in the right breast, 
I touched my breast and I took my friend's hands and put it and I said, Jay, my lump is gone. Completely. Gone. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. Healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Same Go with ahead. this woman as well. Same lump thing. in her breast earlier this year. Tonight the power of God In the name of Jesus, we cause lumps returns to hell. Never to return to you again. In Jesus' name. Celebrate them in Jesus' name. Apostle, yes, please. this woman five years ago, she had paralysis in her right leg paralysis in her right leg medically she, verified yes okay she let me hear her squat she couldn't run a while ago i had paralysis on both legs i yes. just fell paralysis uh-huh i could not walk and then i went yes. to the hospital and they said that like the knee the top of the knee is chipping off okay there was really nothing is her mic loud enough they said I should Thank just you. wear okay, braces beautiful. and yes. I managed it. So when I came to Canada, I didn't feel nothing. Yes. But this week, I started feeling the pain even yes. till now. So coming here, I almost fell on the stairs. I've been experiencing it since Monday. Mm. So I told my friend that I'm going to set my watch like with the dance um, mm. thing, but I could not dance. But when you prayed about it, I could not feel the, the tingling sensation in my knee. It's gone. And I can't jump. So you run, jump, do something. Let's give Jesus praise. Let's give Jesus praise. Go ahead. Apostle, this man has had three years of left-sided deafness. While in the service and left -sided you Left-sided deafness. His ears popped open. How long, sir? For three to uh, five years. Okay. I've Which of them? I couldn't hear anything from this side. Completely. Completely. What happened tonight? Because you, you asked to pray for those who have the left ear. Yes. And you prayed after the singing and everything. I put my hands in my head, in my right ear. I could hear the speakers. You could hear now. Speakers. And, and then my and then my and then my wife came. Oh, that's your wife. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. came to my side here and spoke to my ears. Go and give testimony. You can hear. So okay. wife, you tell him something now. You yeah, close, yeah. The ear, close, before, the ear, close the ear. Close the ear. Close the ear that was working. Yeah. Close the ear that was working. So you say what she tells you. And well, not, not to. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. God is good. Go ahead. God is good. Yeah. Do you understand the miracle that just happened now? Deaf on one ear and just like that. Just like that. Jesus for you. Sir, okay. Pastor, the deafness has been a source of contention too because when we ha have discussions and I forget that this ear doesn't work, next oh, time. Oh, sometimes I you forget. Yes. And I'm checking that he's done what we were supposed to have done. I realize, oh, I spoke to the wrong ear. Can you imagine this? So, right now, you can speak to any of them. Yes. <laughs> we have to rush let's celebrate them congratulations god bless you god bless you god bless you next person so many testimonies yes Five years ago she had that tingling you talked about and it's gone it's gone look at this the tingling has stopped even the tingling has stopped yes apostle i have something else to tell you yesterday when i was preparing to come i'm from manitoba when i was preparing to come i found um some drugs in my son's room and then i was getting out and i had an impression tell me that the cloud ends tonight I'm like, what does that mean, Lord? So I turned back to enter the house, and the word came again. The cloud ends tonight. Mm. And then I started celebrating with my daughters. They are back there. I started yes. celebrating and dancing, and I said, it ends tonight. It ends tonight. And then I said, but Lord, how am I going to go with these drugs on the airport to be checked? And he said, where I am, you will go. I said, what? So I just put the bag there in the checking in. And they didn't, like, the drugs were not asked or anything. And I said, Lord, this is your testimony. 
I am taking it. And when you mentioned that when you were praying for Canada, you saw a cloud over Canada. I said, it is done. The Lord spoke. And Amen. right now you said, God who heals a lamp is healing reproach over your family. Father God, this is your testimony. In Jesus no name. drugs or alcohol in my house ever again. Oh, the cloud over Canada. Let's shout amen for I her. Amen. God bless you. No drugs in Jesus' name. Okay, go ahead. She received an epidural a year ago during childbirth, and since then she's had chronic back pain in her lower back. Yes. While you spoke about it, she doesn't feel any pain anymore. No pain now. Check yourself. You bend. Any pain. Any pain. Any pain. Let's celebrate Canada. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead. Apostle, this is miracle from abroad. Truly, there's no distance in the spirit. Three years ago, his mom began to complain of pain in her knees. Her Your mom, knees. where is she? Far away in Ghana. Ghana. He's a Ghanaian. Do we have Ghanaians here? <laughs> Medase. Hallelujah. And go he ahead. Said he's been spending a lot of money trying to take care of his mom concerning this pain in her legs. Tonight, the power of God traveled all the way to meet her. In Your Canada. mom is connected now, and she's healed. Come on, Canada. Give Jesus praise. Healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I thought, I thought, I thought eight minutes ago that we are praying. She should have faith. And then you called her eight minutes ago. Yes. Yes, yes, that apostle is about to. Work. And right now she's right healed. Now she, yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, go. perfection for her. Our healing remains forever in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let's hurry up. Apostle, there are two persons here with the tingling issues on their hand. And particularly Mama here, she was wearing this. You came with this. Lift it up. That's what you came with. Where was it? Right in my wrist here, sir. You couldn't move your hands. I couldn't. Let the devil see you move your hands. Come on. Now. Look at this. About the beginning of March, I just started having serious pain in my in my wrist. I, I couldn't understand why. I went to the emergency, and they said I had what is called tendonitis, and it was badly inflamed. They sent me to do physiotherapy. I did all of that, and the hand just got worse. Last week, I went back to emergency again. They said there's nothing they can do for me. They can give me a needle, but they can't give it to me, so I have to see a surgeon. I'm waiting for the surgeon to call me back. But the funny thing, the needle they're going to give to me, I can't take it because my body can't and have right it. Now. So when you said that uh, I had this because this is the only thing that gave me relief. Up to this week, I went in to get one of those um, copper bottle and yeah. they, couldn't, they couldn't sell it to me because my body doesn't take that either. So when you were talking about the healing, I put my hand on my head for my daughter who has a brain aneurysm and then I just put my hand over it, and then I saw you went like this, somebody don't, can't do this. And I said, that's me. So as you pray, I start doing this. I couldn't do that before. I couldn't do this before. And I just giving God thanks tonight because God is surely a healer. I shouldn't even be standing here medically even talking to you. But God is a healer, and that's why I'm walking Amen. around. Amen. God bless you. Let's give her a big God bless you. Pastor, Pastor you, men yes, you mentioned uh, someone who had, who's been bleeding for some time now. Bleeding? Yes, she's been bleeding clots, and she went to check in the washroom, and it stopped. Completely. Look at this. Let me sing a song for you. I have searched and searched all the earth. Searched and searched. All the earth and I found that Baba Wani Kamanda Truly I have searched and searched All the earth Searched and searched All the earth and I found that Baba Wani Kamanda I have searched and searched All the earth Searched and searched All the earth and I found that Baba Wani it means there's no one like you northern nigeria for you there's no one like you amen yes please go ahead she's had knee pain both knees for three months both knees for three months yes, 
and right now you're healed please walk ma'am walk go ahead look at this she's even kneeling no 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 i didn't mean please i have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and i found that my god please go ahead she let's see how many more we can take so that we are done for tonight apostle just a moment yes blurry vision long sightedness she couldn't see from where she was sitting now she can see where were you seated behind, behind the TV Be that should be where's that now Far at the end there. Uh, at the end? Yes, you sir. couldn't see? I couldn't what see couldn't you see? I couldn't see the altar. I had to wear my glasses. But when you gave the declaration, when um, um, Pastor Nathan started singing, I got up from my seat, took off my glasses, and I could see you clearly. And around you. Um, Look at this. Amazing. Place your hand on your eyes in the name of Jesus. Perfect vision. Perfect vision. Perfect vision. What God says to one, he says to all, perfect vision in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please. Lumbar spondylosis that you mentioned confirmed in Nigeria and in Montreal, Quebec for two years. Now he can move his Lumbar back. spondylosis. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. That's right. Look at this. Healthier than some of you already. Do what you couldn't do again. My God, the devil is in trouble. Jesus is lord over canada someone say that after me jesus is lord over canada one more time jesus is lord over canada jesus is lord over canada amen he'll never return to you again in jesus mighty name we pray so here's what we do my god we have we still have a lot is it all right to take perhaps maybe one or two more and then i'll just speak a blessing over the remaining and then we'll move that forward and we'll give them an opportunity to share in the morning would that be fine all right because i still need to speak over your life someone's destiny would have listen let me tell you this everything that does not look like god around your life around your destiny around your finances around your spiritual life we can't wait until the conference is done beginning from tonight in the name of jesus may god begin to move over your situation these are not empty words may god begin to move over your situation for some of you your miracle will arrive home before you your miracle will arrive home before you waiting to receive you in the name of jesus christ please be seated this is what happens when his glory is revealed his word comes and with that word liberty comes to his people the bible says now the lord is that spirit there are many spirits but there is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty liberty freedom from pain all kinds of things so let's see how um let's take two here two there and then please keep standing all of you who receive your miracles i'll just speak over your life tomorrow we'll have the time to hear from our online family and then we'll take a few of the testimonies go ahead apostle you need to hear this sir this dear woman has been working for the government for 36 years last year it was a particular day she needed the to government of canada government of canada okay she was rushing to catch a bus and fell her knees were completely shattered but tonight the power of god came upon her she can squat she can run she can do the kinds of things she couldn't do before how long has this been ma'am uh since april we had a government strike and i was declared essential so it was the first time taking the bus to a new location to work. I was relocated from one region to another. So I was foreign to the bus system. And I left early, but the bus wasn't coming. So I thought I'd walk to the next block to get the express bus. And I picked up a very light jog, which was very normal for me. However, I fell, I shattered my knee, I broke my nose, I injured my wrists. 
and I've been home since April. And my friend, who's um, uh, a brother in Christ, he came to visit me and he said, I, God is giving you this time to spend time with him. And he gave me your website. And during my recovery, I listened to you. And here I am today. I, um, I've had two surgeries. I was supposed to be scheduled for a third surgery because I've had swelling in the knee. And you said if there was like a swelling or... I understand. Right? And then what I happened could to not you bend. Now? I, what happened is I could bend 100%. I could actually jog and I can bend. Go ahead, jog, bend, do what you couldn't do. Look at this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Two surgeries scheduled for the third. Let's give Jesus praise. Let's give Jesus praise. Healed, perfected forever in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Apostle, for about a month, she has had this pain on her head and on her neck. Tonight you said we should not accept anything that the devil is trying to put on us. The pain was so bad she couldn't sleep. Even up until yesterday night, she will have to keep turning her head back and forth, not able to sleep. But tonight, the power of God came upon her. The pains are gone. She can move her neck and no more pain. Move your neck. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. It never returns to you again Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Apostle, we have here several testimonies of pain, um, healing from different kinds of pain. Pain. Ear pain, chest pain, neck pain, back pain. All kinds of pain has been healed here tonight. And to God be the glory. Amen. So um, let's stretch our hands towards these people and just speak words of blessings. We're not able to take all the testimonies, but we appreciate the workings of God. And we appreciate you for taking the time to come share your testimonies in the name of jesus we decree and declare that the miracles remain permanent and for those who were not able to make it we'll give you a chance tomorrow morning in the name of jesus we decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit that every miracle received tonight remains forever in jesus name no going back to any sickness you've been delivered from in jesus name we pray amen now let me your attention please when i began my teaching i told us that god has a threefold agenda and that in order of priority there is an agenda for the world of the unsaved and that every believer has the business of seeing to it that everyone who has not met jesus christ that he comes he or she comes to the faith i consider this to be about the most important miracle that would happen now thank god for the healings the deliverances manifestations of his spirit but um the bible says god desires first that all men be saved and then that they come unto the knowledge of the truth it's my joy and my honor to give someone a chance to meet this jesus the one who changed my life the one who's changed our lives the reason for which we are here and um, I want you to know that it pays to know Jesus it pays to love Jesus it pays to serve Jesus and perhaps you were invited by a friend a brother family member colleague and whilst watching the miracles, whilst watching the worship, the testimonies, the Spirit of God began to minister to you, calling you home, telling you that it's time to make the noblest decision that you can make on this side of God's kingdom. The decision to make Jesus Lord of your life. There are thousands of people here across the overflows and many others following online jesus is calling you and the bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart i want to give you an opportunity i know there's a great distance from where you are for all the overflows if you are able to make it to the front that's fine else you may just move to your screens but for all of us who are here there has to be someone here tonight who is an apostle i have decided to make jesus lord of my life consciously willingly 
the bible says he so loved you that he gave his son the father that whosoever that includes you whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting now you can choose to ignore this call you have the right to but jesus is reaching out to you doesn't matter what you have done or not done doesn't matter what has worked or not worked when he comes he extends his love and so while we sing that song worthy is the lamb i would ask everyone who wants to make jesus lord of your life i'm going to count one to five i want you to leave your seat boldly and run right to the front here right to the front you don't have to kneel for space wherever you are jesus is calling you i begin my counting now one canada let's celebrate them thank you for the grass lord keep coming celebrate them as they come win that war finally jesus calls you home there in all my in love you two someone is coming home celebrate them as they come thank you for this love there's always room at the cross come canada perhaps you are here and you are saying apostle i have come out like this before but i didn't even know what i did and honestly i cannot say i have a functional relationship with jesus let me request that you join them for your sake we'll still give a minute someone who is not sure you are you know that you are you this you do not have what the bible calls the assurance of salvation come join them boldly join them join them join them hallelujah now let me speak to someone who is watching by television watching by way of the internet we're here at canada and um, sound of revival canada jesus is moving mightily healing saving delivering many and perhaps you are connected and the holy spirit reached down to your heart and is telling you to join these people do not fight that nudge he's giving you an opportunity you may be alone in your room seated on your couch perhaps in a vehicle maybe your office doesn't matter the business of jesus is everyone's concern he is the way not a way not one of the ways the way he is the truth and his life and so as i lead these precious ones in prayer let me request that you join them i may not know where you are perhaps you may be incarcerated maybe in the cell like our brother in america right where you are jesus is able to reach down to you as i lead god's people to make this salvation prayer please make sure you join them and mean it you're not reciting a poem brothers and sisters thank you for your boldness thank you for coming thank you for making this decision for jesus the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away there's a lot of you and we give jesus praise for bringing you to this conference Amen. Amen. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Jesus loves you. We used to sing it for little children, but it's a song for everyone. He loves everyone. He loves all men. He loves you the way you are. You come to him. Then he makes you what he wants you to be. I'm going to request that you lift your beautiful hands, your right hand, high above your head as a sign of surrender. And I'll lead you through a prayer. Please say this after me, but mean it from your heart. Ready? Say, Lord Jesus. As loud as you can, Lord Jesus. 
tonight i have heard your word i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never keep your beautiful hands lifted father thank you thank you for drawing these ones to yourself by the authority of god's word i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god in the name of jesus the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your lives and i declare that you are empowered to live victorious christian lives i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus for in jesus name we pray amen please let me have your attention for one minute now there are counselors waving uh the plug there and please what i want you to do is to follow them just gently there are a number of you so i would need you to be as patient with one another and orderly while you move to my left that should be your right please counsel us make sure you help them very quickly they will have a word with you they'll just pray with you and then you're back to your seat are you patient enough to do that god bless you let's honor them as they go canada is this the best you can do keep clapping until they are gone keep clapping until they are gone i hope we have enough counselors else a, a few other leaders can join them okay god bless you thank you keep clapping let's celebrate salvation about to wrap up the service for tonight how many of you have been blessed already now just just two just two instructions and then we're done number one please i want you to be sure to connect someone to this conference um it doesn't matter how many people we've had already such a massive tens and thousands of people but there's still room at the cross for someone and so everyone here has the responsibility of doing the work of an evangelist let your neighbors let your friends know that jesus is moving mightily over canada saving healing delivering restoring planting that fire of revival pastors are invited businessmen invited government officials law enforcement agents just any and everyone is invited on site and online so tomorrow we continue we start 9 a.m. on the dot. There's still a lot more I'll be teaching you. And Pastor Nathaniel is going to be leading us in a powerful moment of worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, by the evening, evening starts by 5 p.m. It will be our final service. It will be a miracle service. It will be dedicated uh, to prayer, impartation, and all kinds of miracles so i want your heart to be prepared god has prepared great things for canada and let the nations know what jesus is doing here in canada in the name of jesus again i want to thank all who have um, uh, taken the time to come made sacrifices pastors particularly leaders i appreciate you we honor you this is a house of honor and we thank the lord for this mighty manifestation of his power tonight and um, with this, let me request that you rise as we close the service in the name of Jesus Christ. And so tomorrow we're here. I believe that doors open from 7. So make sure you are here in a hurry. Um, come praying. Come with your heart prepared. This is not, um, this is not a show. 
it's a move of the spirit let your hearts be prepared some of you if i were you i would go back home and listen to this teaching again listen to it again take at least an hour to pray in the spirit between now and tomorrow morning prepare your heart for the many things that god wants to do in your life and i assure you in the name of jesus that your life and this nation will never be the same let's lift our hands together and give god thanks for a great and wonderful service someone say thank you jesus bless him for the word bless him for the worship bless him for the miracles awesome testimonies the atmosphere of his presence the anointing in the name of jesus i declare over your life that as you go you go in peace shout a believing amen i declare that some of you will begin to have prophetic dreams and encounters tonight god will open up the blueprint of your destiny he'll begin to show you details about the next level of your assignment in the name of jesus for some of you on your way home your loved ones will call you giving their testimonies in the name of jesus christ i declare you blessed i declare you lifted in jesus name we pray together as a great family of faith here in canada let's share the goodness surely all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever and ever amen god bless you see you tomorrow morning when did they start liking me can i tell you this when god is silent learn to hear the voice of silence i'm praying tonight everything you have been carrying this is the month to give birth to it your week beginning will experience dimensions of favor you have never experienced much for listening to the end i pray that whatever that you have listened today you are not going just to keep it but you're going to do what god has told you through this message and please kindly if you're new here or you are not so i mean you have not subscribed kindly just click on the red button below the video and subscribe to this my channel and also you can share this video with someone else thank you so much and see you in my next video bye